Greetings! We are back with another material balance problem, and this is a two-step process, and because it is, um, we have much more information, as you can see here. So let's take a look. All right, so as usual, let's transform this long uh, paragraph of words into useful information, and I think we'll be able to solve our problem. So we have a salt water solution going through uh, two reverse osmosis steps, and uh, each step has a permeate and reject stream. The first reject stream is fed into the second auto step, okay? And our feed stream flows at 200 kilograms per hour and is 70% water by mass. So this is all important information. The RO2 reject stream flows at 60 kilograms per hour, while the permeate stream two has salt flowing at 8 kilograms per hour and contains 20% salt by mass. Okay, and we're also told that the mass flow rate of salt in the R01 re reject stream is 11 times greater than that of permeate stream 1. So this is a useful relationship. relationship. Okay, and they tell us to use the information provided, all this, and the diagram below to solve for MP1, MP2, and the salt and water flow rates in the RO2 reject stream. All this is going to be in kilograms per hour, as usual. So this picture just clarifies what they were saying above. So we have a feed stream entering the reverse osmosis step number one and coming out we have a permeate stream and an RO1 reject stream and the reject stream is going into the second step or the second uh, reverse osmosis system and that also will produce a permeate stream and an RO2 reject stream. So I've taken the liberty of creating another diagram with all of this information included. But don't worry, I didn't solve anything without you. All right, so as I said, I filled in all the information given from the text, but now we'll begin solving. So right away when I look at this, there's a couple things you can see right away. So we're assuming that all of the streams will be salt and water, right? Because it's not going to filter 100%. So that being the case, whenever we know that the water in the feed is 70% by mass, we also know that the salt content must be 30% by mass because those are the only two components. Okay, and similarly we can see over here that if salt is 20% by mass, then the water must be 80% by mass. Okay, and if you look at each of the individual streams, you see that we have a good amount of information here. We have the salt percent by mass and we also have the flow rate of salt. So we can use that relationship to find the mass flow rate of permeate 2 as we did in the previous video. So the mass flow rate of salt is 8 kilograms per hour and that's equal to the amount of salt in permeate stream 2. And dividing that over, we get MP2 is equal to 40 kilograms per hour. And we've solved for our first mass flow rate that we're asked to solve for. Okay. So next, another important thing I want to point out is that this is because this is a two-step process, it's not two separate problems. You don't just look at the left hand side solve that and then look at the right hand side and solve that separately you have to look at the whole thing together so you have to look at overall mass balances because if you look at the left hand side we do not know anything about the output streams and if you look at the right hand side we don't know anything about the reject one streaming stream coming in or the RO2 stream the RO2 reject stream coming out aside from its mass flow rate. So what do we have to do? We have to do an overall mass balance. So look at what's
coming in and what is going out overall. So we have the 200 kilograms per hour coming in and leaving we have mass flow rate of permeate 1 and then we also have the mass flow rate of permeate 2 which we just solved for is 40 kilograms per hour and then for the RO2 reject stream that's 60 kilograms per hour so from here we can solve for MP1 and that's just a hundred kilograms per hour so we can fill that information in and we also know that MP2 is 40 kilograms per hour so as I do this I'll occasionally fill in information so we can see what we have and what's missing so it appears as though we filled in almost all the information we have, but we're forgetting one thing. We were told a relationship between reject stream 1 and the permeate stream 1. We were told that the RO1 reject stream has salt content that is 11 times greater than that of permeate stream 1. So how do we write this? First, let's start out by doing a... a salt balance on RO1. So we have uh, that's going to be 60 kilograms per hour of salt. So we have 60 coming in is going to be equal to the fraction of salt times a hundred plus the fraction of salt in this stream times the mass flow rate and we can also fill that in we saw that there's 200 coming in and 100 coming out so that also means that this must be 100 kilograms per hour so let's fill that into our equation alright so this is the salt content from permeate stream 1, this is the salt content from rejection stream 1, and we are told that this is 11 times greater than this. So we can write that XR1S times 100 is 11 times this amount, XP1S times 100. Okay, and filling that in, we get 60 equals 12 XP1S times 100. All right, and now we can solve for the fraction of the salt in the permeate stream 1. So dividing this over, we get 5. Dividing the 100, we get 5 over 100 equals XP1S. And that's equal to 0 0.05. All right, and now this is really useful because we can begin to fill in a lot of information. If this, if this mass fraction here is 0 0.05, that means out of 100, there's 5 kilograms per hour of salt. And then left over, there's 95 kilograms per hour of water. And now look at that. We can also get some more information. If we look at the salt in these three streams, we have 60 coming in, 5 coming out here, and that means 55 must be coming out here. And this is made up of salt and water, so out of 100 kilograms per hour, if 55 is salt, that means that 45 kilograms per hour must be the flow rate for water. All right, so we are just about done here we've got our final step and that's to find out the information for the reject stream 2 and we can figure that out by looking at what's coming in once again with the salt we see that we have the 55 kilograms per hour of salt here we have the 8 kilograms per hour of salt here so how much has to be coming here 
Um, that's just 47 kilograms per hour of salt. And then out of 60, there's 13 kilograms per hour left. That's going to be the flow rate of water. And we have solved for all of our unknown values and answered the question. Thanks for hanging in there. I'm glad that you made it. And if you found this helpful, please check out the other videos. As always, thanks for watching.